What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John plays here and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild that we just got teased. In my E3 reaction video some of you guys are very disappointed after me seeing all of that and just going all right cool after the energy from the banjo reveal and then just me staring at this trailer i was just trying to analyze everything way too quickly and because of that i was totally caught up in it but right now we're going to be going over it in very very high detail and going over everything that we could possibly see in this trailer and the opening scenes we start to see all of these weird teal green squiggles start to emanate and as they're going forward they start to make sort of symbols and these symbols that we're seeing here it becomes a symbol and then almost just as quickly it disintegrates so we have it becoming a symbol and then it falling apart same thing here i don't know if this is the sheikah language or if this is something completely different entirely on to the next scene where we see a very panned out image of everything going on here we see these large spikes that are all pointing in toward the center of the room and these large spikes are somewhat reminiscent of the large pillars that we see surrounding Hyrule Castle in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, except these are all pointing in. And then at the very top, we have these brick structures coming down and what would appear to be just regular ground or earth, possibly a type of stone, leading to this small orb shape right here. Now, not exactly how it is, but the overall feel of this kind of reminds me at the top of what we see of towers in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Whenever you climb to the top of a tower, you have all these different directions pointing in, and then it distills the information of the local area, and then it drips down. Even though this is clearly not a tower or anything that looks like it would interact with a rune, it still somewhat has that feel to it. Between that, the inscriptions on the pillars, and then also all the green and teal going on, this has a very Sheikah tribe sort of feel to it. Seeing as how there is a hand holding back the beast at the very bottom, or what looks like a hand, there's all of this spell spewing out of it. This would lead me to believe that this has something to do with the Sheikah or an ancient tribe reminiscent of the Sheikah placing a spell on this creature down here. At the same time, how we see what appears to be malice at the bottom surrounding the creature, and then uh, later on in the trailer we see the creature wake up, this could lead us to believe that this spell shouldn't be actually coming out. That it should remain completely within this little wand hand thing and not coming out at all, and that uh, the spell wore off or something is going on that's causing this creature to release this malice and break free of its current state. Also, the music that's played here, it is definitely something played backwards. You could just hear whenever those little peaks of sound go up. That means that there was a full sound and now it's reversed. After reviewing it very thoroughly, in reverse, I wasn't able really to come up with anything, including taking the actual notes and trying to figure out if they were trying to play a certain song that we've heard before. Again, I didn't really get anything on that. Moving forward, we can see a lot of wall drawings of what appears to be a knight holding a spear, riding an armored horse, and then back here we can see a lot of armored archers in the background as well. This type of drawing really seems to coincide with what we've seen in the Sheikah drawings of the maps and the wall inscriptions. During Impa's cutscene where she tells Link about the calamity that happened in the past, it has this same sort of overall feeling to it. In fact, a lot of the drawings on the warrior who's on the horse, how you see those shapes on his back, this looks a lot like how the Sheikah have various designs drawn on their body, whether it be the actual Sheikah symbol or just other random symbols going around. All of the drawings that we see on the Divine Beast, they're sort of pattern that's how it's drawn on them instead of just, you know, a solid color. In addition to the borders around, 
would strongly indicate that these drawings were drawn by the Sheikah. So it is Link and Zelda in a cave full of Sheikah drawings. Next scene, we get an above view of exactly what's going on here in the middle with all of the inscriptions all around. I'm just going to refer the, to this as a spell. Upon closer inspection of the spell that's coming off of the center of this scene here, and comparing it to a translation of the Sheikah language, there's... I don't see a lot of correlation. Now this could be a variation of Sheikah, this could be a different language altogether. From what I see, it does not look like this is a Sheikah spell. Keep in mind the Sheikah are tens of, or hundreds of thousands of years old. Their languages could have changed a little bit in that time. Look at the English language, that's changed a lot. Great, we finally get a scene of Link and Zelda in this underground area. First thing that we notice is that they are walking across a very large wall that has a lot of inscriptions on it. And between this triangle symbol here and the spirals, this is clearly made by the Sheikah. We're also treated to some luminous stones, a large sort of elephant bull thing with horns, who seems to carry a lot of wood, and Zelda. Link wearing the Hylian hood, it seems to be the same design as the original Hylian hood in Breath of the Wild. We have Zelda on top of here in the champion shirt with the Hylian cummerbund, that's what I'm gonna call it, deal with it, as well as her regular pants that we've seen from the cutscenes. All three seem to be holding torches, the same torches from Breath of the Wild. We got a little mouse over here, there was no mouses in Breath of the Wild. They're adding stuff in the game, confirmed. Okay, here we have a much better close-up of what's going on here. We could clearly see Link with the Hylian Hood. He does have the Master Sword, that's an important thing to note here. As well as Zelda here with her own hood in a style that we have not seen before. Also, her hair could be in a ponytail underneath here or she could have chopped some of it off we don't know yet it doesn't occur to me right now but i don't think that there's something that has these in particular type of pads on it with all of these straps going around so we could be seeing a brand new piece of gear but between link's ponytail his earrings this is clearly the same link not to mention the champion's tunic that we've had in breath of the wild going into the background a little bit we could see the mysterious figure here and we see the hand on top of him with these large gold rings around it. The last thing to note is that the mysterious figure is standing on top of this malice that is slowly moving in the background. In this clip, we see significantly more luminous stone, which leads us to believe that once again that they are underground. We see the large bull ox elephant thing. Is that the same thing from the uh, the bull that's all over the Hebra region? It might be. Zelda stopped to grab some water. We have some beautiful lighting and particle effects going on on screen. We see the mouse again, and the malice slowly coming up the stairs, and then devouring the mouse. Nom 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 nom. In this far away scene, we see Link, Zelda, and our buffalo friend on top of this bridge. They don't seem to be doing anything. They just seem to kind of be standing there observing or doing something quietly to themselves. We see significantly more luminous stone in the entire image, maybe just to lighten it up instead of it being so dark in there. Or this is where luminous stone comes from, these big stalagmites all throughout here. Here we're treated to a beautiful close-up of Zelda with a super serious look on her face, as well as Link, who is currently blocked by this stick. When comparing it to the very last end scene of Breath Breath of the Wild. We see that, yeah, this is, this is her outfit. The same one she was wearing at the very end of the game, even down to the little, the little clip in her hair, right there being fully visible. Again, her hair is shorter, maybe she took her extensions out, I don't know. She has this genuine look of surprise right here, like the two just stumbled upon this. While I don't have any more to say about this in particular scene that we've already seen some elements of several times, now we're treated to this long flowing hair off of the zombie. I didn't know zombies still had hair. In addition to a lot of possibly jewelry, another angle of the same thing, more of these gold bands around its wrist and around its foot as well. Here we get a nice close up of this hand coming down with this really funky looking bracelet on, and it seems to be grabbing into the chest of our mysterious figure. We have an action scene of this going around. Uh, it's weird, it almost seems like he has accented incisors like a vampire does. And this head crown, this jewel right here, is something really interesting to take note of. 
Oh, hang on, what was that? For a very brief second, we see Link with the same glowing green around him. This is the same green that we've been seeing in the trailer for all of the, what I'm calling the spell, circulating around the hand, but as you see, this comes and then it controls his hand, or engulfs his hand in the same green light. Link then rises his hand up, but if you see the expression on his face, it, lo it almost looks like he's in agony during this. He's grabbing onto this hand that has been affected by the spell, trying to, I don't know, if there's a spell going into him, maybe he may be in pain and holding that hand in pain. We then see that all of the spell is removed from around the mysterious figure's above area, and we see the malice really shoot upward very aggressively. We see a scene of Link helping Zelda climb up something. I think that's just random B-roll, as well as this shrine that they are entering. So this shrine, or well, more appropriately, large underground structure, looking at the way that these pillars are laid out, not so much the inscriptions on them, however, the overall feel of it does remind me a little bit of the three mazes that you encounter in Breath of the Wild. The large three mazes that, of course, were made by the ancient tribe who resided in the Farren region, and they worship that large uh, dragon shape. And then at the entrance, we have sort of these two large hands or paws that are carved into the structure. We also see something golden triangle here, but we really can't make it out. So in this next scene, we see what we could presume Link being lower and this mysterious hand being higher up. It grabs onto Link, his hand then goes limp, and then it seems to drag him against his own free will. That slight dragging motion pulled him. Well, this makes it very clear who this is. This is Demise. 100%, this is Demise. Granted, this also kind of looks like Ganondorf from Twilight Princess, with the gold jewel on his head, the red hair that's apparent everywhere, as well as the additional decoration that's around him. So a couple ideas as to what's currently going on here. Is this Demise? and Demise's malice has been held back, but this hand has slowly been sucking away Demise's power and powering up Beast Ganon? Is this Ganondorf's physical form who has been trapped down here in Laden Malice? And then this hand once again was up and trying to pull out his malice and energy. This could also be Ganondorf trapped down here with his malice trying to expand, but this hand holding it back. This large hand silhouette that we see coming from the wall, this seems more like a flashback than anything else because this appears to be much more of a flushed out model, not exactly representing what's going on down here. This could be the scene in which physical form of Ganondorf was defeated and then sealed away by this hand. This could have all been done by the Sheik Moving forward, we see Link and Zelda. There seems to be some sort of disruption in the structure, and Zelda seems to fall a little bit. Not too far, don't worry, she's okay. We see her holding a torch and inspecting this hand. Super long fingernails. Need to cut those fingernails, dog. She turns around in terror, and in this scene, we have a lot of this red in the air, very similar to the moments before the Blood Moon happens, which as we know, the Blood Moon is a release of Ganon's malice and power, resurrecting all of the enemies in Breath of the Wild. Could that power and resurrection have something to do with this mysterious figure? Who, his eyes become illuminated. That's that's the whole trailer. That's pretty much what it's about. His eyes come to life, again, expelling the same red that we've seen. In fact, this is the first we've seen of it, which would make me feel like this scene happens right before this scene, just like this. His eyes turn bright red, and then they become animated. These eyes actually look a lot like the small eyes that are holding back Ganon's malice in Breath of the Wild. You know, the ones you do have to shoot to progress through areas. And then we get to see Breath of the Wild, obviously not overtaken by Ganon. So this would immediately make us think that this happens post game in Breath of the Wild and a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild with Zelda being freed, Link being able to travel and help out Zelda and not going on side quests. We don't see the malice taking over Hyrule Castle. And then there's not much else going on here other than that Hyrule Castle itself is rising up out of the ground. Kind of the same way that the Great Plateau is risen up a little bit which makes me feel like there's something underneath there. 
Maybe in the same way that underneath the Great Plateau, we have the Divine Beasts that we saw in the Champions DLC. And then the trailer ends with just a little bit more of the flowing green texts and shapes. Then we see that the sequel to Breath of the Wild is now in development, and that's literally it. So the biggest question is, who is this man? Is it Demise? Is it the physical form of Ganondorf? I don't know. And why does his teeth look like that of a vampire's? Can we see a scene of Demise with his mouth open? Is that a thing? Oh, right here, boys and girls. We get to see Demise's accented incisors. The, I, I really hope these are incisors. I don't know much about teeth, but as you can see, that tooth is a heck of a lot longer than those teeth, just like we see on this boy over here. Definitely in this scene right here. Those are... Those are some pointy boys, the same way that they are on Demise. And just for argument's sake, I wanted to pull up this scene right here from Twilight Princess with Ganondorf, who clearly has straight teeth. Now, they were able to model how, the, how deep his teeth are, so I'm sure they could model if one of these was an incisor. Now, I know that it's a little ridiculous going off just the shape of his incisors being more vampiric. And if it's good enough for forensics to identify deceased bodies by using dental records, then it's good enough for a Zelda tuber. I really do strongly feel like this is Demise, and the whole narrative of this is Demise's malice was being held back underneath Hyrule Castle, which has these walls underneath it, going over this bridge, leading us to this temple, where this room is, where all this magic stuff, for some reason, that's holding back Demise, and then all that magic, for some reason, expels the bindings of Demise, and then enters Link, or maybe rejoins with Link, and then Demise wakes up and he wants to destroy everything. That's it. That's it. That's everything. There we go, boys and girls. Full analysis of the Breath of the Wild sequel first look trailer. Uh, my money is on Demise, and until I get further evidence going otherwise, that's who I'm going to bet on. I want to know what you think. Leave a comment down below. If you think that it is Demise, be sure to hit the like button, or if you think it's Ganondorf, then instead hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.